So in this problem, we are going to compute the Fourier transform of the signal f of t equals e to the minus a t u of t, where u of t is the unit step function. For now, we are going to assume that a is a real number greater than 0. So a can be 0 0.4, 7.6, 2.5, 3, just, just some real number greater than 0. If I plotted f of t in the time domain, this is a signal that is 0 for all time less than 0. And then because of the unit step function, it turns on at time 0, and then it decays as time gets large because a is a number greater than 0. So f of t is really just this decaying exponential that turns on at time 0 and decays as time gets large. Our goal here is to compute f of omega, which is the Fourier transform of f of t. So to start doing this, we are going to just write down the definition of the Fourier transform. The definition of the Fourier transform is f of omega is an integral from minus infinity to infinity, f of t e to the minus j omega t dt. So I've written the definition of the Fourier transform in terms of the frequency variable omega. Sometimes when you do the Fourier transform, an equivalent definition is in terms of the frequency var variable f. So if you wanted to use that definition, that would work perfectly fine because omega and f are related linearly. Omega is 2 pi f. So if you wanted to, you could replace all the omegas with the quantity 2 pi f and work this problem identically. So that's the definition of the Fourier transform. For this problem specifically, we have that f of t is e to the minus a t u of t. So I've substituted in the specific signal into the next step here. So I have an integral e to the minus a t u of t times e to the minus j omega t dt. And then what I can do is I can use the unit step to simplify the limits. The unit step turns on at time 0 and goes to the right. What this means is that everything time less than 0 is 0. So by integrating from minus infinity up to 0, I've integrated 0. I haven't integrated anything up. So effectively, the u of t changes the limits of the integral from 0 to infinity, but I haven't changed anything because all I've done is gotten rid of zeros in my integral. So. We let the u of t simplify the limits, so now our limits are 0 to infinity, and I have the product of two exponentials. Instead of the product of two exponentials, I can write that as an exponential to the sum a plus j omega. So I've just used a property of exponentials there. And now doing this integral is pretty straightforward, because integrating an exponential is pretty easy. The integral of an exponential is just the exponential, but then we have to take care to divide by the derivative of the argument of the exponential. The argument in this case is alpha plus j omega times t, so when we take the deriv derivative of that with respect to t, we have a minus a plus j omega quantity on the denominator. So that is the quantity we need to evaluate now at the limits of infinity and zero. So when I evaluate it at infinity, I get zero because when I plug in t equals infinity, I get e to the minus infinity over some quantity a plus j omega e to the minus infinity is 0, and then I have to subtract off this same quantity evaluated at 0. So when time is equal to 0, I get e to the 0, which is 1 on the numerator, and then on the denominator, there is no time variable, so I just simply have the quantity negative a plus j omega. Right now I have 0 minus a minus quantity, which is essentially a positive quantity, 1 plus j omega. So what I've just done is I've just computed the Fourier transform of the signal f of t equals e to the minus a t, and we've shown that its Fourier transform is given by 1 over a plus j omega. This answer is actually good for any a not equal to 0. When we started the problem, we said let a be a real number greater than 0. That was essentially just to be able to give a sketch of what f of t looks like. If a is a real number greater than 0, f of t is indeed a decaying exponential. But there was nothing in the math down below that required a to be greater than 0. We can't have a equal to 0 because then we would have a unit step that turned on and we would not be absolutely integrable anymore. But any other number, even a complex number a, this answer is still good. So actually this answer is good not just for real numbers, but it's good for any number, real or complex, except for the case a is equal to 0. And it's a equals 0, we run into the problem where then f of t is a unit step, and we're not absolutely integrable. So this answer is actually a little bit more general than the sketch we made up above.